yeah, look, I'm smashing through it. Probably going to probably smash through it pretty quick. I uh, didn't even put the green screen up. Honestly, I just have a, like a bit of green material from Spotlight. I usually throw on the privacy screen to get the green screen, but... Yeah, I'm not even going to bother with that. We're just going to save time. <laughs> so, look, as we can see, we scored a 2,294. Not a good score. Went down another 2.5k places, basically. Almost back to 30k. Yeah, it's a real disaster to end this season, unfortunately. Um, lost a bunch of leagues again. Dropped... I don't think I made, like, top 8 in any of my leagues. The leagues just went poor. Total stats... Like, sorry, total overall rank, like, went poor. It's just not good, so we'll jump in, look at the team, I guess just go over it quickly. Um, for those that did watch last week, I did use my final trade. I talked about it pre like before I did it, but we brought in Kerno for Sexton. Sexton obviously didn't get named, um, so because he didn't get named, I mean, I had the Copper Donut no matter what. Like, it was either Nank Donut or Sexton Donut, and Sexton up the Kerno just seemed like the good play. I talked about last week, I think, because he's playing for the Coleman, he's going to have a lot of goals in a lot of these games and score a lot of points, and that's what he did. So, was very happy there. Um, now, we did end up captaining Dace Koss after VCing Anderson, so pretty good there. Sheasel absolutely pumped us again. That's just how it is. Uh, Cherry, we did talk about him on the Supercoach Hub, and uh, Scobie asked me if I think he could be our one for the rest of the year, and I said he could be. And uh, that 151, it's definitely put him in, uh, in first place to... Start the last five rounds, you could say. Uh, so he's got a little lead to end that, but I don't think that was too out of the box. I think a lot of people could probably sense that, considering the ruse runs and how good he's been. Like, yeah, that that's not too surprising to anyone that managed to get on him, move Nank to him. Congrats, you got a huge advantage there, uh, and he's going to be really good. So... Great play from you there. Uh, yeah, a few disappointing, I guess, scores. Obviously, Anderson kind of sucked because they were at home, and this is, like, his first sub-ton at home. I think it might even be his first, like, sub-130 at home, so it was a little bit unfortunate. He does have West Coast this week. Uh, I don't know if he's seeing him is going to work. I mean, look, he got tagged, I'm pretty sure, again. I think he had 27 disposals by the end of it, though, and just poor usage again. Yeah, um just unfortunate for Anderson, really, but, I mean, that's why I put the VC on him, high variance, didn't work out, went to Dacos, were rewarded, so, Dacos was actually my highest scoring player, so, yeah, definitely, right call there, um, yeah, Ryan's been down, honestly, if you're at this point of the season that you've been able to get off Ryan for so many other players, for a Sinclair, um, for a Stewart, like, few other players that just were killing it, then you are hugely rewarded, because he's on, like, a three-round average of 90, I think. Um, he's not good right now. Since the game plan changed, it, it's crazy how much of a cliff he's fallen off. And if you're in a position where you were able to move Ryan on after having him, you know, say you got him early like we did, round two, or you got him round one, started him, and you just hold him basically until like three weeks ago, and you realize, yeah, this role change ain't it, and you got off him for like, as I said, a steward or somebody... Uh, just huge reward there. Yeah, the 75, just so painful. Holmes had a down week, painful. Houston, not great. Uh, and Nass came back with a massive one, the 134. So that's at least pretty good. Obviously, we traded him last week for McGovern, and we didn't feel too rewarded with, I think, the 85 he put out. But the 134 definitely justifies that. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah, midfield, nobody was really insane. Oh, my goodness. Sorry that the internet's just kind of cooking right now. Um... I think we saw Dunkley's 121. I think that was maybe my best midfield score. Um, oh, no, we had Steele's 136. So Steele is back. Um, yeah, I did talk about Steele obviously having this Marvel run at the end of the year, and this was more or less when we wanted him. Um, but, yeah, he crushed it this week, which was awesome. I'm just going to quickly check out Luke Ryan's. No, I can do this in summary. Uh, it's just cooking. Don't worry about it. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, 136, very happy with that. A lot of people that probably moved on him because he wasn't putting out the goods, probably feeling a bit painful right now. Yeah, three round of 90, five round of 97. Like, the 97's, I guess, acceptable. Um, but so many players are going 105, 110 plus at the moment, and Ryan's being left in the dust. And if you could have moved on him, as I said, like three weeks ago, absolute reward. Uh, Dawson didn't play, so we had to take Dowling 69, so we are already down on that. Green was pretty unders. I mean, people like Whitfield also went massive, as well as Sheasel, as I mentioned. So, like, a lot of commonly known players pumped us this week. Uh, we did have English have the down week, so he's continued that yo-yo of 130, 80, 130, 80, 130, 80. And this was an 80 week, and he got 80, so this is a 130 week, so hopefully he can do that. 
Um, and Nank into... Nank obviously didn't play for us, but he's into Cherry. Cherry's usually decently restrictive, so it could be hard for us. Flanders a gun. Um, it's something we talked about on the Super Coach Hub podcast, and I think it's way more relevant than how my team is currently. It's about players next year. And player... I don't care if Flanders is mid only. We're starting Flanders. Obviously, he had a bit of time behind the ball. He's had a bit of time forward. I don't know if he ends up with DPP. If he ends up with DPP, he's like 100% a lock, but... I think he's a lock as it is, so lock him in. I think she's also someone you just got to lock in as well. Um, but this is one of those classic non-owners feeling the pain a lot more. Last year, I thought English had to be a lock this year because he burnt me so hard. Like, he just destroyed me as a non-owner last year. Didn't own him once. And then this year, he's been pretty sub-average. So it, it's always hard to say. If either of those two end up with DPP, they're 100% a lock. But I think Flanders is still 100% a lock. And she's probably like 85% a lock, uh, even if he's mid-only. Uh, Zorko, the 138, yep, very nice, uh, Heaney, 82, yeah, he's been really unders recently, Reed, not really what we want from, obviously, it, it's good enough for a forward, but we held him all those weeks because we wanted more, uh, Wood with the 69, that's pretty disappointing, honestly, um, Wood was probably never the play, it was probably a bit crazy of me, um, but honestly, that's, that's my own bad, I should have moved on Fisher early, I held him an extra week, took rookie score, and then moved on him, should have moved on the Cordwell earlier, uh, and same with Sexton, you know, those are guys that just held too long, held too long, they leaked too many points, and then I moved them on too late and had to move them on for not the most optimal players, uh, and it just, yeah, it just hasn't worked out. Uh, well, I say that Sexton, I think, is optimal to Kerno, but yeah, he did punish me for a few weeks there. But anyway, this is how the team's looking, it's not great, we got to finish the year off, we'll see how we go, um, plenty of good VCC options here. Obviously, Bont into Melbourne is giving up a ton of points. Ed Richards, uh, Trelaw. Something I found funny about Trelaw is he's just, like, actually one of the best players I've had of a year. And even if you just, like... So I'm just going to quickly jump to players real quick here. And looking at total points, first of all, I find it crazy that she's got up all the way up to second, and that just shows how punishing it was. And I think looking at the total points players just shows how punishing my season has been because I don't own a lot of these top players, the guys that have earned the most points, shouldn't have taken the risk of hitting players, oh here we go, it's finally loading, I'm so sorry, I don't know why it's so slow, it's just garbage, <sighs> come on, let's get through this, let's get this done, <laughs> oh. oh, here we go, okay, so obviously Bont number one, she's on number two, that's painful. Sarong number three, that's painful. Then we have like Merritt, Cherry, Neil, boom, all hurt. Uh, and Ryan, as I said, to a degree, missing out on his earlier scores definitely hurt. Because uh, he had like that 170 or 180 to start the season or whatever it was. Um, but yeah, if you could have got off him recently, so rewarding. Flanders, honestly someone I got on pretty late. Um, and then we have Trelaw down here, and the thing I find crazy about Trelaw is, in reality, if you started him, yes, he ended up missing one game, which sucked, but look at that average. Obviously, it's insane. Assuming you have a rookie covering, maybe that rookie gets you, let's just say, 55 points, and all of a sudden, you're above Neil in total points. You're ninth for total points. He gets you 80 points. Boom, you're seventh for total points. Honestly, if anyone started Trelaw, what, what a big-brained play. Like, he ends up being an absolute GOAT. Which is crazy. But yeah, as you can just see, like, I just, there's so many players in between my players for total points that I've just, the wrong calls. And I think another big thing to look at is my poor captain choices. Um, so, I mean, it's been 20 weeks. So me, I reckon I probably average 100 on my captains over the year. If I average 100, someone averages 120, then boom, I'm down 400 points. If they average 130, I'm down 600 points. 140, I'm down like 800 points on captains alone. And look, I know that we've had some bad ones. We had the McGovern 72. We had the Dunkley 98. We had the Tom Green 5. Like, we've had a lot of bad captains this year that just absolutely destroyed us for total points unfortunately and then as i mentioned we just we just missed a lot of these really good picks as well which wasn't great um but going back to c's and vcs uh look as i talked about we have west coast into gold coast i don't think i'll go anderson i think i just threw it on him i don't think i changed him i think i just changed my captain at this point um but bont ed richards to law any of those into melbourne Gorn could go for a big one because his team needs it, and he's into English, who's a very unrestricted ruckman. He gives up a lot of points. So Gorn could come back for a big one right now. Um, Sheezel, I, if personally, I and Sheezel, I think he'd be my VC. Like, no doubt he'd be my VC. I mean, you could see him for some safety, 
but I think he's just the upside's too high. I would feel very comfortable V seeing Sheasel in this game, but yeah, I think there's a lot of good options in these early games. Uh, Geelong into Adelaide. Stewart could be a really big one this week as well against Adelaide. Collingwood, Carlton. Let's be honest, Dacos is going to get clamped by, I think, Chincotta's one that does the clamping. Um, I mean, you can't clamp Dacos, but he's not going to score like a 140 because of it. Uh, we're pretty loose in the midfield too. We could give up some serious points to Cripper or maybe even Walsh. Um... And then Power Sydney, yeah, not interested in that game. GWS Hawthorne, not interested in that game. Oh, Essendon and Frio, I mean, for the captain, you could be... Ugh. I don't know, I'd feel much more confident if I was captaining a Brisbane player into this Marvel game. Personally, I think Zorko is the most obvious captain there is. He dropped a 140 on them, he had 100 at half time, and then still went and tagged him and kept him to 40. I don't think they start the game like that. So I think, yeah, Zorko is the safest C, and because of that, you can basically VC anyone earlier as long as you have a loop for them. And that's where the problem comes in. It's like, I don't have a loop for anyone after this Collingwood game or even in the Collingwood game because I can use Kruger as a loop. But that means I have to be using someone from either these first four games. And I think that's why I did look at Anderson, because I don't have anyone else that's like... I don't know. I guess I didn't really have anyone else that really stood out to me. I think Flanders is obviously a very obvious one here. So I think me personally, Flanders, LDU, Bont, they're the three big ones I need to consider as VC options. I think Bont's probably safe for a big game. LDU's been a little bit inconsistent recently so I don't know about that one and Flanders has actually just come out as an absolute jet so I think I might just go Flanders actually might just VC Flanders into Zorko that seems pretty nice to me and then we'll run with that but that'll be me for the day guys uh look I hope you enjoyed the video I hope your team's doing way better than mine because god mine is a nightmare um, and best of luck in all your Super Coach Finals. I hope it all goes well. Uh, if anyone interested, we will have NBL coming out uh, in like four weeks' time. Look, you guys have probably already tuned out by this point, but we know I did quite well on NBL last year. I'm hoping to reciprocate that. And um, I'm keen to make some NBL videos when that comes around, but <laughs> that just, yeah, that just shows how well my Super Coach uh, AFL season's going because I'm already looking at the other formats. <laughs> anyway, guys, till next time. Peace. Later.